Thank you very much indeed. Um, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a great pleasure to join you uh, for this session. My apologies, I'm not there in person, um, but uh, because of technology, it's uh, it's possible for me to present remotely, which is great. So I'm, I'm Faisal Osman. I'm a, a cardiologist and electrophysiologist working in Coventry at the University Hospital Coventry and also University of Warwick uh, here in the UK. Uh, and I'd like to present some initial results of a feasibility study uh, of using home ECG monitoring and blood pressure monitoring, a two-in-one device, from a patient and uh, public's perspective. These uh, are my disclosures. So we're all familiar with the ESE guidelines uh, for atrial fibrillation and for hypertension. Uh, my two esteemed uh, co-speakers, in fact, are, are co-authors of the AF guidelines. And these really uh, set a, a guidelines help us in terms of managing uh, our patients uh, with these conditions. The update from 2020 in the guidelines clarified how we diagnose atrial fibrillation, recognition that increasingly we're now using technology with single EDCG. So AF is diagnosed on a standard 12 EDCG or 30 seconds or more um, of a heart rhythm showing AF uh, on, on a single channel recording. And in those that were screened positive, this is established only after a physician has reviewed the tracings. The guidelines recognize the emergence of technologies, be they implantable, uh, non-implantable, wearable technologies, usable, portable technologies. Uh, they talk about opportunistic screening in those 65 or more, as well as systematic screening in those 75 or more, and increasingly the importance in certain uh, risk patients, particularly those of an elder age and those who have hypertension. Now, we know there are a billion people affected by hypertension globally. Um, when you think about it, the population of the Earth is seven and a half to eight million. That's a huge number. One in seven to one in eight of us um, is affected by hypertension. Atrial fibrillation, we know, of course, is the commonest arrhythmia and in combination with hypertension significantly increases the risk of stroke. And stroke can be devastating. It has a huge impact on mortality, morbidity. Um, and stroke prevention is a top priority globally, and particularly in Europe and certainly here in the UK. Now, in terms of emerging technologies, we have the Omron Complete device, which is a two-in-one blood pressure and single lead ECG um, monitoring device that can be used by patients, by uh, the public at home. It relies on having a smartphone where we can download the Connect Omron app, uh, and it uses the AliveCore technology in order to get the tracing of the ECG. So in our study, the aim of the study was to investigate the usability of this Omron Complete device uh, with the users that, that uh, we were looking at. We broadly speaking had two participants. The first were patients who were attending an EP clinic. Uh, they were offered the device for two weeks to take away, use at home, encouraged to use it a couple of times a day. Um, and then they had some questionnaires um, and later a semi-structured interview by phone or in person. Um, we also had a public volunteer group. Uh, so we have uh, members of the public who have volunteered their time uh, in order to help with research projects from a patient's perspective uh, and give a patient's input from, uh, uh, from research studies and research trials. And we, have, we had 11 public volunteers who uh, came to an interactive workshop and a focus group. Uh, these also uh, these this group of patients also then had uh, questionnaires and a semi-structured interview by phone afterwards of the 15 that we recruited from the ep clinic we did have two that uh, withdrew we co collected quantitative data as well as qualitative qualitative data and the latter was analyzed using thematic analysis these are some of the baseline demographics of the the two cohorts so the mean age was around about 60 uh, with quite a wide uh, variation in age people as young as in their 20s up to their 80s, a fairly even split in terms of males and females. You'll notice that a third of our patients and public uh, volunteers had hypertension already, the vast majority on, on antihypertensive medication. About three quarters of our EP patients, unsurprisingly, had some form of atrial fibrillation that had been diagnosed. However, none of the public group were known to have atrial fibrillation at the start. In terms of owning blood pressure monitors, again, uh, almost two thirds, just over two thirds of our EP patients had a, a blood pressure monitor they, they were using at home. Uh, and that was even higher in the public volunteer group, uh, where just over 80 percent. 
Um, and unsurprisingly, very few, of a much lower number, own their own ECG device. It was just under 10% in both groups. So what, uh, what do we find in terms of the questionnaires and the user experience? So we used the, uh, the Libert scoring, five-point Libert scoring system, uh, and we found that uh, both patients um, and public volunteers actually had quite a, an overall positive experience in terms of blood pressure monitoring, importantly also interpreting that uh, data. Um, our patients, EP patients, uh, were very positive about using the monitoring, less so in the public volunteer group. And perhaps unsurprisingly, both uh, pub, both EP patients and the public volunteers felt they needed more support with the tracings and interpreting what they were finding on the ECG rhythm strip. Um, and this was much more uh, much more so when you compare it in terms of the support that, that was needed for blood pressure. There was a significant difference in terms of the experience of of the two groups. The uh, EP patients uh, felt it was more positive in terms of doing the two measurements at the same time compared with our public volunteers. In terms of benefit and the perceived benefit, both groups felt that it was actually very, very beneficial to record uh, an ECG at the same time as doing their, their blood pressure monitoring. So a recognition that actually rhythm is important as well as uh, blood pressure data as well. Uh, we then used thematic analysis to uh, evaluate the EP patients and the public volunteers, and six key themes uh, came from the EP patient group. Those were of patient empowerment, uh, investment in health, device and user requirements, uh, support, and also ergonomics of the actual device itself. And we'll, we'll go through each of these in turn. You'll see that there are some quotes. These are taken directly from the patient group. In terms of patient empowerment, um, patients felt they had greater control over their own health. Um, and interestingly, that they felt very reassured if the device said that there was no arrhythmia, if they, for example, were getting symptoms, that was reassuring to them and they felt greater control over their own health. Um, in terms of investment, the group felt that they were certainly willing to pay uh, and invest in these devices if it would help them maintain their health. In terms of device requirements, um, there was a need for good connectivity. Obviously, there was a need for having a smartphone in the first place. And the group felt that the most benefit would probably be in those who had underlying cardiovascular conditions or cardiovascular symptoms. In terms of user requirements, uh, they felt it was a very simple system. It could easily be integrated into existing clinical pathways. Uh, one patient commented that it dovetailed very nicely into clinical appointments where they're able to collect their data at home and then show it to their, their clinician. The, the group was very, very keen to learn more about their ECGs and also to share their data with their healthcare professionals, be that their GP or their uh, the consultant looking after them. And in terms of the ergonomics, they all liked the design of, uh, of, of, the, of the complete device. There was familiarity with existing blood pressure monitors, which I think helped. And they also commented that it was quite portable. It's slightly bigger than a smartphone, of course, but uh, but overall the consensus was that they liked the uh, the shape of it. In terms of the public volunteers, again, we had six key themes that, that came out from the thematic analysis of the public volunteer group. Uh, and they were a familiarity of the device with their existing blood pressure monitors, uh, in terms of true value of where the device is, again, user and technical requirements, the, some comments about the design also, and some factors that would influence whether they would purchase the device uh, or not. So in terms of familiarity, um, a lot of our public volunteers, over 80% had a blood pressure device at home. So this was very, very similar. Uh, and in fact, it was the comment was that it was very useful to be able to take an ECG rhythm strip at the same time as, as doing their blood pressure. In terms of true value, again, this, this group also felt that if there were certain specific targets of population that were targeted with, with this, they would most likely benefit from, uh, from these technologies. Uh, the group felt that it was quite simple to use once it was set up, uh, and, and they also were very, very keen to learn uh, more about ECGs and the tracings they were, they were seeing. In terms of technical requirements, there was an, an acknowledgement that obviously if you didn't have a smartphone, uh, then it would be difficult to use this. One, uh, one uh, particular volunteer mentioned that they couldn't buy it for their grandparents because the grandparents don't use smartphones. So again, we can get around this. And uh, as, as uh, Professor Hendricks has mentioned, the elderly population can be trained and do learn this, uh, this, this, uh, this sort of technology that can pick it up. 
In terms of inclusivity and in design, uh, overall, it was very uh, well received. Uh, people thought it was a very good design with a very easy interface. There were some comments made about uh, patients who may have limited dexterity, for example, arthritis, which is going to be more common in the elderly population who might find it more difficult to use uh, given, uh, given the use of the device itself. And factors influencing purchase, uh, there were comments about a well-known brand. So Omron was perceived as a very recognized and reputable brand used extensively in primary care uh, by our GPs. And uh, this was something that was very positive. So in summary, ladies and gentlemen, the Omron complete device was positively received uh, by both groups and uh, both groups felt that it encouraged patient empowerment. A basic level of technical skill was required and uh, where users needed that, the support would need to be put in place and clearly a smartphone would be needed with this particular device. Users were eager to be educated on ECGs to learn more about their tracings, uh, which would then help to facilitate their care at home. Um, and they felt that there was a clear clinical integration and support um, that this device would certainly achieve. And these are all very, very important when we look um, at, at managing these patients. And these are two beautiful summary slides from the AF, uh, 2020 AF guidelines that highlight how the patient is at the center of everything we do. We have associated healthcare professionals looking after the patient. Uh, and these technologies can certainly help us in terms of our CC to ABC approach that the guidelines advocate. I'd like to uh, thank Clear White and Lucy Gilbert in our innovation team at the University Hospital Coventry, Warwickshire, and of course our patients and our public volunteers. I thank you for your attention.